Welcome in everyone, this is Sean with MTG Gateway Jr. You're a home for standard popper content here on the interweb, and of course home to the Youth Standard Popper Championship Scholarship Tournament here on the island of Oahu. So uh, thanks for stopping by, and today we're going to be taking this red-white Boros Pants deck, or Boros Auras, um, for a spin. This is uh, loosely based on the d list that Julian played to um, second place finish in both of our last two Youth Championship Scholarship tournaments. Um, it's a pretty solid strategy, and I'm going to see how it fares in the arena metagame. Of course, while the No Escape Standard Popper event is going on on arena, trying to record as much as possible. All right, so here's the gist of the deck. Um, Julian's playing a bunch of lifelink creatures, right? Of course, Healer's Hawk is amazing. The two mana two twos are great. Um, and then, like, just the best white one drops um, to just, like, get on the board early. And then he's playing a bunch of ways to suit him up, right? Swashbuckling gives him plus two, plus two in haste. Frenzied Rage, plus two, plus one in menace. Um, Julian was playing two Knight's Pledges as well, but I'm trying out um, the equipment just because they are a little bit, they're less explosive in the early game, but better in the long game. Um, Julian's deck is really just focusing on trying to end the game as fast as possible, um, so Knight's Pledge is uh, reasonable there. Or, I'm sorry, what did, I keep calling it the wrong name. Let me make sure I'm calling it the correct name. Yeah, Knight's Pledge. I keep getting it confused with the three mana aura. What is it called? Dub. Uh, no. Knightly Valor is the five mana aura. Anyway, so he was playing Knight's Pledge, trying out um, these equipment just because they're better in a long game. And then uh, the only other change I made was um, Julian was playing for Lightning Strike, which of course is legal in our paper tournaments because it is an uncommon, currently in standard, but it was a common printed previously, so it's legal in our paper tournaments. Unfortunately, it's not legal on MTG Arena, so I'm trying out Chandra's Pyro Helix instead. I've been reasonably happy um, with this card in the metagame so far. There's lots of one toughness creatures, and then um, being able to go to the face when you needed to is um, pretty good. And then, so I'm playing two Chandra's Power Helix, one more Skewer of the Critics, and then I think he was only playing two Bishop Soldiers, so I'm playing a third one here. So uh, this is the deck. We're going to try it out and um, hopefully win some matches. I think I already got my 15 wins. Oh, no, don't want to play this deck. I already got my 15 wins um, in the event, so we're just playing for funsies. Uh, but Standard Popper is a great format, in my own humble, unbiased, completely biased opinion. Um, so I'm just trying to play it as much as I can. I love, love, love some Standard Popper. Let's get the volume up here. Ooh, okay, this hand is... If this were a planes, I would probably keep this but we got a mulligan this. Okay, this is reasonable. Um, got to bottom that. So if this were a knight's pledge, would I be happier? Maybe? I mean, if I... Jousting Lance is significantly slower here, so maybe we're going to get punished for uh, having the slower card. Seeing lots of this uh, green white tokens deck on arena lately. Okay, no red mana here would be really good for Pyro Helix. Um, I think I just want to attack though. Like I can't let him uh, build up his board too much. Otherwise, I'm gonna just gonna lose to a really big inspired charge. Okay, so he's taking it, which means that he probably has some payoff card in his hand, either Inspired Charge or one of the Convoke um, creatures. Yeah, there we go. Unfortunate. Alright, there's our red mana, just a little bit too late. I don't really want to suit up our dude and trade so i'm just gonna not attack this turn but play out the jousting lance jousting lance is gonna let us attack into rosemane centaur and of course law rune enforcer can tap down rosemane centaur so we should 
we're looking pretty good here. In this particular instance, I'm happy that this Jousting Lance is a Jousting Lance and not a Knight's Pledge. Okay, he is going pretty wide here. That's pretty good. Um, so let's see, I can... I can equip my guy, but then he just double blocks, and I trade my bishop soldier for his rosemane centaur. I don't super love that. I think I'm just going to play bishop soldier and say go here. Maybe I should have equipped. I don't know. Just like equipped and not attacked. But then I can't tap one of the centaurs, and I just have to block. Uh, yeah, this is not good. So we just get bashed here. I think we probably are just going to triple block. Yeah, let's triple block the centaur. So we're going to take three after the lifelink so we go to go to 19 trusty rusty okay yeah this green white tokens deck has been super popular uh in the queues i've probably played against it maybe like four or five times in all the videos i've recorded so far um, it seems very solid. Civic Stalwart and Inspired Charge are very good payoff cards. So is Rosemain Centaur. Okay. No blocks. Wouldn't mind drawing a land. Jeez. Yeah, so we can... Oh. So I think we need to play defense with our Mesa Unicorn, unfortunately. Which means that we're not going to have lifelink. But I think we need to try and kill him in the air. And just hold the ground. Yeah, this game is not looking great. He's just going too wide. So we have to trade with a Rosemane Centaur here. If I were him, I would just attack with everybody. And then we're taking seven. Jeez, we're just super dead. It's not the land that we needed. Uh, okay. Good game. Alright. Not off to the best start, but we'll keep on chugging. Jousting Lance was interesting. Like, I don't think it would have been better as a Knightly Valor. Okay. Uh, this hand is kind of like what the deck signed up to do. So we just have to hope we draw a red mana. Ooh, nice that Healer's Hawk goes under all of that. Or goes under Law Rune Enforcer. If we draw a mountain, this game is looking very good. If we don't, this game is looking pretty miserable. He 
he's attacking. Um, okay, I'm just going to play into... Eh. Oh, okay. I guess that was enough. Yeah. He could have had any pump spell or Gideon's Reproach or anything like that. But um, I guess he didn't have any of those things and just felt super far behind. So I've never really been a fan of these Aura decks just because like, you are just asking to be two for one all the time. But I guess, um, you know, you do open yourself up to some explosive starts like this one. Let's just move in. This is what we signed up for, right? Okay, I guess that uh, this is more of what we signed up for. <laughs> you might have a Gideon's Reproach here. Wow, he's killing the Rusty. That surprises me. I guess he has another flyer, so he'll be able to double block the healer's hawk. Yeah, okay. So we can't really attack with healer's hawk anymore. But we do get to continue using our mana very efficiently. Unfortunately, we're just out of gas. We don't have very many big swingy spells in the deck. But, like, we have a ton of removal that can get rid of Rustwing Falcon. Um, we could draw another Aura to put on the Healer's Hawk. We could draw Short Sword. We could draw Jousting Lance. Okay. Well, that Conquistador is very good against our current board. He just drew three cards. Two cards. Well, maybe he already has one in his hand. That'd be sweet. Rusty. Okay, well. We do also have a whole bunch of super low impact cards in our deck. So we might just end up drawing those. Yeah, so in the finals of both scholarship tournaments... Julian lost to white aggressive decks and basically like he just got to the mid game couldn't close the game out and then uh, one two three four but then yeah okay so I would trade my healer's hawk for all three of his dudes well healer's hawk moment of triumph and frenzied rage Oh no, I would only get to kill it. That was a bad attack. Stupid math. Or stupid Sean. Not doing math. So that was just a 3 for 2. Which feels terrible. <laughs> Especially when he has Legion Conquistadors up the wazoo. We are super up on life though. Maybe we should have just made that trade. Okay. Yeah, this is how Julian lost in the finals. Well, he did not make a terrible attack like I just did, but he just 
the board stalled, they got into a top deck war, and he just had a whole bunch of low impact cards in his deck. Alright, no sense in just continuing to take damage. Double Conquistador. Yeah. So he did draw the other one. Alright, we are super far behind. Yeah, I'm gonna scoop this game. Uh, I do not like these Aura decks. Like, we just got two for one to twice, and then Legion Conquistador pulled things out for him. I would much rather play an equipment deck, but you are much less explosive when you play the equipment decks. Alright, yeah, this is what we signed up for. <laughs> We're doing our thing. Is it going to be good enough, though? That is the question. Well, looks like our opponent probably has a bunch of removal, which is really good against us. Blue-black control. Almanac Raving. Essence Scatter. Nope. Wow, just nothing on two. Aven Eternal, okay. Mm. All right. That was a very lucky draw. This feels so bad. We're just like hoping. <laughs> oh, hey. Please don't two for one me. Please don't two for one me. Does he have an answer for the unicorn? Not right now. Alright, I'm just moving in. Like, I don't think we can beat a removal spell on the unicorn anyway. So, we just gotta try and get... Get our damage in while we can. Blink of an eye, god damn it. <laughs> Casual three for one with the blink of an eye. Yeah, I guess we could have just not gone in with the aura there, but yeah, I'd so much rather just play mono white with equipment than red white with auras.
drawing Jousting Lance is our best card in this matchup because it like forces him to have removal instead of creatures. But his deck also just has no shortage of creatures. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, it has no shortage of removal in it. I'd be very surprised if he has no removal in his hand right now. Moment of Craving. No? Just running the chumps? Wow. No removal in his hand. That's a shocker. Counterspell? Nope. No counterspell either. Does he have a Dark Bargain in his hand? Another Blink of an Eye? Capture Sphere, okay. Why did he let us attack with the Mesa Unicorn? I'm so confused. He's holding back the Muse Drake? Yeah. Muse Drake does not block a Jousting Falcon. Oh, well, I guess he's holding it back. Second Muse Drake, okay. Craving. All right. Well, we're out of creatures, and we're on a five-turn clock. Our opponent has drawn eight lands, and we have drawn five. Drawn six. Yep. Ugh. I cannot stand these aura decks. It just feels so bad. Skewer the critics, A. Eh? This turns his two turn clock into a three turn clock. Yeah, this guy's deck is interesting. It's just like a bunch of value stuff. Like Lazatep, Reaver, Raven, Eternal, Muse Drake are all like sort of two for ones. And then Soul of the Rapids is his top end. I feel like turtle is just a much better top end uh, okay but I guess uh, winning in the air is relevant sometimes come on lifelink dude it's not the worst I imagine he's just got infinite removal spells in his hand. Yeah. Okay. Blah. Blah. Auras. Very high upside, very, very, very low, low side. Downside. Downside. All right. This is kind of a lot of lands, but 
not going to mulligan it. Nope. That was a good draw. This is probably going to eat a removal spell. Oh, excuse me. Interesting. He kept it on top. Okay. Hmm. So I think I'm gonna do it this way. This does open us up to getting, um, hit by a skewer the critics but it does also open me up to going bishop soldier swashbuckling next turn Fury. You can Warlord's Fury all you want, buddy. Well, I hope he doesn't have a shock. Okay, no shock. Pretty, pretty good. Drawing that land was terrible. He's chumping. That's pretty terrible. He is down to only two cards. That's not good. That means his card quality is going to be very high. We got lots of medium draws left in the deck. I wonder if this deck should be playing Burning Prophet. Alright, I hope he doesn't have a removal spell. Alright. 
This is looking pretty good now. Having four toughness means that he's probably going to have to two for one this if he wants to kill it. And he's pretty low on cards. Alright, we got there. Alright, I think this will be our last one for the night. So, I mean, I'm sure I've made it clear so far, but I'm not a fan of playing all the auras, but I do understand the appeal. Like, they are very powerful. Um... If it was if it was me I would just be playing equipment instead hmm. run this guy out first because they might use their removal on it and then that'll clear the way for healers Hawk <laughs> this is funny so we get to attack if he blocks, then we get to shock it. If he doesn't block, then we get to skewer the critics it. Bada bing, bada boom. Wow, this shock is gonna be really good. I guess I have Rustwing Falcon in my hand. That's why it wanted to auto tap the mountain. All right. So happy that this is a short sword instead of a swashbuckling or something like that. Skewer the critics. I'm kind of tempted to skewer the, the Lava Runner just because I can tap the Weird with Lava Rune Enforcer, but Weird gets huge and Lava Rune Enforcer can die, so better safe than sorry to just kill the uh, Spell Gorger Weird. Yeah, so I under I mean, like, if you saw our video on Is That Spells, you saw us trying to make all these cards work together. <laughs> Right, Spell Gorger Weird crashed through Warlord's Fury, and it was just not happening. <laughs> just, you're spinning your wheels too much. Like, this format is all about just playing to the board. Playing a bunch of weird cantrips isn't going to cut it. You got it. Tap your guy. Huh. That's a lot of healers, Hawks. Jaya's greeting. Okay. All right, we got there. So I guess the the trick is to just not draw any of the Auras in the Auras deck. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, as you guys can see, this deck is uh, pretty powerful, but at the same time, like, you're very susceptible to removal. Um, I don't think the Auras are, like, um, powerful enough that I would rather play them over the equipment. 
so I think I'd rather just play like the white creatures alongside equipment and then if you want to splash for removal that's fine but yeah that's my impression of the deck clearly Julian um did very well with it um so I'm not gonna say it's bad it's just not my personal preference to just like open yourself up to two for ones all the time Okay, well, thanks for stopping by. Let us know what you think. And uh, if you want to support the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to um, support the youth project, uh, check out our Patreon, MTG808 Jr. at Patreon. And uh, take a look at what we do and see if you want to support us. Um, thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.